As the foundation includes the design of wall footings for the latest ACI 318, but how do you actually enter the information into the program? How do you optimize the design? This is Javier Encinas, and today we're going to design from scratch a wall footing example using ASDIP Foundation. Let's get started. As an example, consider the continuous footing shown below, which supports a concrete wall in an industrial facility. The wall is eccentric, 6 inches from the center line of the footing, and the soil report provides the allowable soil bearing capacity as 3 KSF. The structure is exposed to depth, life, and wind loads, whose reactions are shown below. So the loads are depth, 3 kit per foot, and life, 2 kit per foot, vertical loads. And the wind load is 1 kit per foot horizontal, an arrow plane bending moment, 1 kit feet per foot. The bearing capacity is 3 KSF, concrete 3 KSI, and uh, steel 60 KSI. So with this information, we need to uh, design the wall footing. We need to find the dimensions of the footing. We need to find the thickness and the reinforcement. So let's open ASIP Foundation. And this is the template for the wall footing design in ASIP Foundation. In the left pane, you enter the information. In the right pane, you see the results. The first step is to enter the information that was given in the statement of the problem. So let's go to loads. We know that the dead load is 3 kit per foot, live load is 2 kit per foot, then the wind is moment 1 kit feet per foot, and shear is 1 kit per foot. So these are all the loads given in the statement of the problem. Go to the materials tab, here we enter what we were given as the information. F prime C, 3. FY, 60. Uh, soil bearing pressure, 3. And the rest is the densities. So everything is correct here. In the right side, we can click on the graph tab so we can see immediately the results graphically as we change the dimensions in the geometry tab. Click on the wall tab. Then the wall offset is 6 inches as given in the statement of the problem wall thickness 8 inches go to the footing tab we know that the allowable bearing capacity is 3 ksf so 2.5 so we can reduce a little bit the dimension the footing width let's say 3 feet now it's over it's 3.9 so we need to increase it maybe 3.5 we are a little bit over 3.1 so we need to increase a little bit more say 3.6 now we have 2.9, so perfect. It's just below the maximum allowable bearing capacity. So this is the optimized uh, footing width, 3.6. In this case, the water table is 3 feet down, so it doesn't affect our design. Let's go to the at a glance tab. So here we can see a summary of the results. We can see immediately what is passing and what is failing. For example, in the load transfer area, the development length ratio of the footing is failing, 15% over. In addition, in the reinforcement design area, the X bars development length ratio is 25% over. So all this has to do with the reinforcement. Let's go to the reinforcement tab at the left, in the footing tab. The default is number six at 12. Probably we don't need that much because we can see here that the moment is 1.7 versus the capacity is 16.7. The ratio is 0.11, so we can reduce the rebars if we want. Let's say we select number 5 rebars so that the development length will not be an issue. Here also the longitudinal bars, number 5s. In addition, we don't need 12 number 5s longitudinally, maybe 3 rebars number 5s. Now the minimum uh, steel area is failing, or is very close to the maximum. Let's say four number fives longitudinally. Now the minimum steel area is 0.84. There's still a problem with the development length of the X bars, the footing, 25% over. But if we go to the graph tab, construction tab, we can see here the issue. The issue is that this portion of the footing is very short, 
it's a very small distance for the rebar to develop. So we need to hook this rebar. We need to hook the rebar at plus X, and now it's hooked. Let's go back to the other glance, and we can see now that the development length ratio is 0.82, so it's okay. We still have a problem here with the uh, development length ratio at footing. That means that these vertical rebars hooking into the footing, uh, the thickness is, is not enough for this uh, hook to develop. The footing is already 12 inches thick, so probably we need to check if we can reduce the size of these rebars. Go to the wall tab. Instead of number six, let's select number fives for the wall. Let's go back to the other glance. And we can see here now that the development length ratio of the footing is 0.87. So with this configuration, everything now is passing in the other glance tab. If we go to the condensed tab, we can see a more detailed set of calculations grouped by topic. Everything is passing here. Everything is okay. Food transfer, for bending. In shear is also okay. If we go to the detail tab, if we scroll down. This is a detailed set of calculations, step by step, with exposed formulas, also references to the ACI code. Everything is passing, as we can see here. No red flags at all. In the graph tab, the soil bearing tab, this is the final configuration of the uh, soil bearing pressures. In the shear tab, it's a one way shear at the left and at the right. In the bending tab, the bending moments in this area, the bending moment in this area. And finally, the construction tab, uh, sketch details in section and in plan view. As you can see, it's very easy to design a wall footing in acid foundation. You can enter the information very quickly and also optimize your design in uh, no time. If you like the software, please visit the website www.asdipsoft.com and download the free 15-day trial. Please subscribe to the channel if you want to receive notifications in the future for similar videos. Thank you for your attention.